For the last three months, I've been on a mission, challenging myself to use 3D printing to make literally everything I could possibly need for my 3D print farm, makerspace, and recording studio. And in this video, we're going to push consumer 3D printing to its limits by designing, downloading, printing, or otherwise hacking our way towards every solution that I and you could possibly need for your own perfect personalized maker nook. My goal by the end of this video is to really use 3D printing to finally get my work area organized and under control. And hopefully I'll be able to inspire you to do the same. Let's get after it. So first things first, no, this isn't going to be a workshop vlog because you guys made it abundantly clear last time that those types of videos aren't super interesting to you. Instead, throughout this challenge video, I'm going to be listing out each of the things that I needed in my makerspace broken down into chapters so that you can skip around if say, you're not interested in filament storage or studio lighting. Then we're going to see together how we can use 3D printing to solve the problem better, stronger, faster, or cheaper. But there are a few rules I've set for myself for this challenge, just to keep things interesting. First, if I cannot 3D print something, I still need to use 3D printing to enhance or upgrade it in at least one functional way. So no, decorations don't count. And before you guys flood the comments with comments about how 3D printing is not always the right tool for everything, I'll add a second rule. If 3D printing isn't the ideal tool for the scenario, I'm still allowed to use other consumer or hobbyist maker toys such as lasers or of course power tools to complement my projects. But absolutely no professional tools such as lathes, milling machines, or injection molding, obviously. And third, I'll be sharing the STLs for any of the designs I develop on printables.com. Let's get organized. The first and probably most important thing for any 3D printing makerspace is going to be storing your filament. At least if you're as addicted to hoarding filament as I am. To be honest, this one was pretty easy, at least on the planning side. I simply downloaded the epic and open source filament storage solution by Pooch over at Repcord. It still sounds weird to me to call someone Pooch. The Rep Rack. Thank you so much, Pooch. This involved cutting and mounting French cleats to the wall and then 3D printing these brackets for actually holding the 19 millimeter pipes. Though after the first roll, I ran out of white PETG and instead of ordering more, I just decided to go dumpster diving, at which point I found a massive old chest of drawers, which provided me with the plywood, not only for this project, but for a few others coming up. Well, I literally cannot believe my luck because I found plywood and lots of it white on the street. And uh, I'm loading it onto a kid's bike trailer and dragging it across the city. Free stuff, free wood, can't beat it. What's cool about this is that I not only cut down on my use of PETG, which is after all a petroleum based plastic, but also I saved a bunch of wood from the dumpster. From there, I used the longer B1 30 watt laser I recently reviewed to cut up a bunch of plywood brackets, cutting down the cost of the rep racks to basically free besides the pipes until I got to four rows. I love how this solution looks and the convenience is massive. This is, in my opinion, way better than storing filament on shelves or piles. And I'm going to be finishing out that fourth row over there as soon as I get around to ordering more 19 millimeter pipe, because as usual, I didn't do my math right. Speaking of shelves, the next order of business was getting all of my 3D printers organized, especially because I was and am waiting on nearly a dozen or so new printers for various reviews and sponsored videos. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on those videos as well. Obviously, with some of these printers weighing as much as 40 kilos and lumber prices through the sky, 3D printing or otherwise DIYing the shelves themselves wasn't really practical. And instead, I ordered a bunch of Makiste sheet metal shelves locally. 
I then paired them with extra bathroom wall tiles that I had lying around to create sturdy, clean surfaces at zero additional cost. Side note, I did the same for my workbenches, simply dividing one shelf into two units to create cheap, sturdy, standing workbenches. But how would I use 3D printing to upgrade or enhance these shelves? After all, rules are rules. Well, to start off with, I needed to model and print some additional feet for the shelves since each package only came with four and I was using half of them as tables. I did that in a few minutes in Onshape, printed them in black TPU, and away we go. Up next, I also modeled and printed an adapter for the popular filler filament storage system, which would mount a filament spool roller either with or without bearings to the sides of the shelves so that I didn't need to waste space above each printer or on the shelf with standard filament rollers or the Tush system. Finally, I used that same base model to design and print some brackets to secure the shelves to the wall for safety. I'm also thinking about creating some form of gridfinity shelf using the same type of mount to store my stuff a lot more organized like this, maybe using magnets. And I also want to design and improve a Bowden tube mount for mounting the Bowden tubes on printers that have those reverse Bowden tubes. I'd also love to do some external filament sensor holders for some of my other printers or a way to store extra print beds off of the shelves and out of the way. But really, now that I have that base template for a mounting solution that can fit to the pegs of my shelves, I can really create any kind of mount for whatever I want to mount to these shelves. So drop a comment below and let me know if you have any other ideas. Up next, it was time to get all my various hardware, fans, printer parts, and so on organized. I played with the idea of building my own cabinets and or shelving, but I was just too busy. So I caved and I ordered a tool chest, specifically selecting one that had two empty shelves, but I was an idiot and I didn't check the dimensions when ordering. So I was a bit disappointed when this tiny little thing showed up. So I knew that I would have to be smart in maximizing my space vertically. For that, no surprises here, I used my old familiar friend Gridfinity to print out base plates not only for the drawers themselves, but also for the top, which I haven't glued and mounted in yet, just so that I can take things out and mount them and move them around when I have the cart in use. By the way, it's at this point that I do need to give the first of probably a few shout outs to the folks at Bamboo Lab who heard that I was taking on this challenge and agreed to send me like four massive shipments of their super high quality filament for the project, ranging from matte PLA for the Gridfinity bins to ABS, carbon fiber, nylon, and even some polycarbonate for some of the upcoming chapters later on in the video. I'll be honest and say that I already had a lot of these Gridfinity bins that I printed out before that I brought over from my home office. But after seeing just how nice the Bamboo Lab matte filament prints, I've actually been caving and reprinting a lot of these old ones in their matte PLA. And then I think I'm gonna use these uglier shiny ones at home in my shed where I won't see them every day. Does that make me a horrible person, Mother Earth? Anyways, I used the Bamboo Lab matte PLA to print all of the bases as well as a ton of the bins. And I'm even working on printing a bunch of the storage for the taller bottom drawer for storage of miscellaneous tools that didn't come with the toolkit. I love the look of that tool foam that's precisely cut, but because I'm always getting new tools and seeing just how much I need to store in here, Gridfinity with the flexibility and the ability to move things around was just a much better option for this. With that rave review of Gridfinity, you might think that I'd also be using it for cables and electronic storage, but I'm actually not. As I've said before, Gridfinity is best for solutions and situations where you frequently want to take out individual bins and move them. But for situations where you want the organization to be relatively stationary, it's just not as good of a fit. Instead, I opted again for HD's modular catch-all trays, which I have talked about in a past video. You may be wondering why I didn't use the modular shelf organizer system with no bottoms from my four top organization systems video. And the answer is pretty clear. I wanted to be able to take the entire organization system out, for example, to take it to the other side of the studio and set up a specific camera or mic or whatever setup. I can do that with this system, believe it or not, 
but I couldn't do it if there were no bottoms in any of the bins. Or if they were all individual bins like Grinfinity, it would take me an eternity to take out all the bins I needed. With this system, I can just lift it out, and since the bins are pinned together relatively tightly, the system doesn't fall apart or get disorganized. And yes, the organization is still a work in progress, because the other beauty of using the system versus store-bought organizer trays is that I can reconfigure it whenever I want if, say, I buy more of a certain type of cable or battery. Oh, and of course, I used one of my favorite functional prints of all time, which I have covered, I think, in the past videos, for actually winding and keeping the cables tidy. This time though, I color coded each of the different types of cables, again, using Bamboo Lab Matte PLA. I'll be honest, I hate having something that isn't orange, lime, or black in my field of view, but I got so sick of having to look closely to figure out what type of cable something was. So there is a bit of a mishmash of different colors. Form follows function after all. After printing all these bins though, I needed to find somewhere to actually put them. But more on that after I thank this video's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Sovol, makers of the SVO7 3D printer. The SVO7 is not only extremely affordable, but also quite speedy and easy to use because it's powered by the open source clipper and clipper screen. Throughout this video, I had a lot of 3D printing to do, and I have to admit that although I have a lot of great 3D printers, including many very exotic ones, I kept coming back to the Sovol SV07 when I just needed something to print properly and quickly with no tweaking or fussing. And that's because although these are budget 3D printers, they're also, in my experience, extremely reliable, punching well above their weight in terms of price performance. Whenever I was printing PETG, ASA, or PLA, the Sovol SV07 kept up with the challenge using their high flow all metal heat brakes that reach 300 degrees. And I love the fact that they include an accelerometer for tuning input shaping so I could print all the stuff I needed for this video fast. I recommend the Sovol SV07 to anyone looking for a great printer on a budget. So visit the link in the description to pick up your Sovol SV07 3D printer today. All right. Let's get back to the video. As I mentioned before, I decided to save time and money on actual workshop tables, which are super expensive, and use industrial shelving instead. But this also meant that I didn't have any drawers to actually be able to store stuff. I toured around with a few ideas and realized that here, once again, 3D printing could really help me out. I picked up some of these heavy duty drawer pulls, which were super hard to find in 60 plus centimeter depths. But the real challenge was how the shelf legs themselves have an L shape, which would make it impossible to actually mount drawers or pull them out. Fortunately, using my 3D printer, I was able to model and print some strong spacer blocks that fit perfectly into the groove of each one of these legs, much better than a simple wood block would. I printed them in Bamboo Lab PAHTCF, which as you can see, I had an old roll of, which I had to dry out. So I switched mid print. Definitely make sure you dry out your nylon. I also used six perimeters and 80% infill so that these blocks are effectively as strong as machined aluminum. I was then able to mount them to my shelves and they're designed that one pin goes all the way through and one goes here for stability. And then I simply took some spare plywood from the construction of my kitchen to add a frame to the shelves. Now I have a place that I can actually store all my catch-all trays. Okay, that's all well and good for the little things, nuts, bolts, fans, cables, but what about bigger stuff? For example, I really should put ongoing projects into bins so that they don't take up precious surface area and space while I'm not working on them. Same with products that I need to review, but which are on hold. For this, I needed some bins, stat. I'm one of those people who goes to Ikea and fills up my cart almost exclusively with injection molded bins of every size. And so I had a lot of these kicking around. And yes, I could have cheated on the rules and just 3D printed some clips or dividers for these bins, but what's the fun in that? Instead, I decided to model and print my very own open source version of the Ikea Samla bins and lids with a twist. My version can be printed in base mode. 
And after consulting with a few of my patrons, thanks so much, Rafa, it's also parametric, meaning that you can create your own at say one half or one third size so that you can stack the little ones on top of the big ones. Now it's still very much a work in progress, but the idea is to create bins that are more economical with more flexible sizes and which print faster than it would take to work your way through the maze that is Ikea. Now for these, I experimented. I, I tried out PETG and I even had Bamboo Labs send over a roll of their super high quality polycarbonate because PLA is a little too brittle with too poor layer adhesion for such thin walls that are gonna be under stress when you pick them up from the side. Now, so far from my testing, PETG works phenomenally as long as you use a one millimeter nozzle and you definitely do not want to do this in small perimeters. You gotta do it in vase mode for that layer adhesion. And you can see they don't work as well if you try to do it with a 0.4 nozzle and multiple perimeters. As far as the polycarbonate goes, I can tell that this is gonna be really promising in terms of clarity and strength, but I'm having a little bit of a problem with my Voron where it won't go over 270 degrees, something with the thermistor. So we're gonna to have to put the polycarbonate on hold for now. Overall though, I think these bins turned out great. And while they're not as clear as the Ikea ones, they're definitely faster, cheaper, and easier than driving 45 minutes each way to Ikea. So I plan on printing out more of them whenever I need some smaller storage bins. Plus, I actually have a 500 millimeter square printer coming soon, so stay tuned for that, and hopefully I'll be able to print out some of these mid-size bins very, very soon. None of you are going to be surprised by what's next, though you might be surprised by how little progress I've made on it. Even though I pretty much had all of my storage bases covered at this point between the shelves, tubs, bins, trays, and drawers, I still wanted to add a honeycomb wall to my main background simply because it looks nice and it had kind of become my signature in my previous videos filmed at home. Plus, I had the theory that adding a honeycomb wall would add some sound diffusion, aiding in reducing the echo in this little nook that I record from. For this part of the build, I decided to paint the walls black first so that the contrast wouldn't be too stark. I then used roll after roll after roll of bamboo matte black PLA, and I was really grateful that it comes in refill packs because that meant I wasn't depending on local plastic recycling to get rid of the spools, and it also saved me a lot of trips to the recycling bin. And for those of you who are wondering, I have calculated out the price per square meter of tool storage for these versus the IKEA version, and these not only use less plastic, but they're also cheaper and made of renewable bioplastic. Not to mention, they're much more flexible since you can get them to the exact size of your walls. Special shout out to the creators of these edge frame pieces, which definitely make the whole setup look much more polished than the one I have in my home office. Though I do know that this is slightly crooked. Oh, and another shout out to this user on printables who figured out that you can use the AMS to basically stack these so that you can print one after the other, allowing the printer to run overnight. I did this using PETG as the supports and it worked out great, helping me get these 60 plus squares that I need to print out much faster than it would have taken one at a time. Now I just need to find the time to actually mount them. For the actual mounting pieces and components, I decided not to use the existing neon orange ones that I have at home, and instead I reprinted everything I needed on a case-by-case -case basis using Bamboo Labs Matte Orange PLA. I think that the lighter orange will do a better job catching different colors of accent lights that I wanna shine at my background, and plus, I think it's much easier on the eyes than the neon was. Now I just need to actually get it done and decide what to mount here video equipment, 3D prints. Drop a comment below and let me know what you think would make for the most aesthetically pleasing background, would you? One of the big challenges in my makerspace is that I need sufficient lighting for recording video. Now, obviously I wasn't going to 3D print the light, nor was I going to take the risk of making my own C-stands or anything that would be holding weight over my head. So instead, I ended up buying a couple of these extendable very poles, which allow you to mount lights, cameras, microphones, or whatever you want, wherever you want. However, these poles are actually designed to go floor to ceiling, and you can't mount them wall to wall overhead unless you pick up some brackets to securely mount them to the wall. And here's where 3D printing can come into play. 
I modeled up these two different brackets since they are different on the top and bottom in on shape in really just a few minutes. And I printed them out in boring old black PLA, which is very strong under normal temperatures with plenty of perimeters and lots of infill. And since these brackets aren't actually exposed to any ongoing stress or weight, I don't have to worry about material creep. They're just there to act as a backup in case the pole gives under the weight. And so I periodically just need to check that the pole isn't resting on these brackets. Easy. Then for my C stand, I made a few small upgrades to its functionality. First, I modeled and printed some angled caster adapters out of bamboo lab carbon fiber and nylon, which allow me to quickly and easily move the C stand around the studio. Then I modeled and printed some cool snap on shelf bin things so I can put things like adapters and lens cases somewhere safe and memorable when I'm not using them. These little types of solutions are why I love 3D printing. I literally have no idea how I would have bought or created something like this if I didn't have a 3D printer. Okay, all that was pretty easy to do with 3D printing, but can we 3D print a table saw? No. Huh? Mm. Yeah, no. But we can definitely upgrade it. As of right now, I don't have any proper dust extraction system and I instead have to just rely on this crappy shop vac until I can justify the expense of something bigger. Unfortunately, these two don't have the same hose diameter. And again, I gotta say, what do normies do in situations like this? I had to think to myself, what would I have done four years ago in this situation? And I'm pretty sure duct tape would have been the answer. Today, however, I just cracked open on shape, designed the entire thing in seconds, including adding a nice little taper to the edge of the sleeve, and I printed out in TPU, and boom, I have an airtight adapter between the table saw and my shop vac. Bada boom. Up next, we have acoustic panels on the walls and on the ceilings, because the echo in this basement is really, really horrible right now. Here again, I was saved by my dumpster diving adventure and many of the boxes just had to be cut down from old drawers. They were even painted white, at least for the ceiling panels and everything. I toyed around with the idea of 3D printing 90 degree brackets for the inside, but I didn't need them and using 3D printing just to use 3D printing definitely felt like bending the rules here. So instead, I decided to use laser cutting and I used a combination of the Niji Max 4, which I really struggled with, as well as the longer 30 watt laser to cut out a design into one of the panels and give it a bit more of a decorative vibe. I also used cutouts from the RepRap brackets in the corners of the ceiling mount panels to hold the insulation in at the corners. However, I'm really not satisfied with the fact that I didn't use 3D printing on this piece of the project so I'm planning to model out some fully 3D printed hexagons, which will take advantage of the extra rock wool that I had to cut off of some of the panels. And I'm gonna turn those into smaller acoustic panels that I can place throughout the room. Cause as you can see, I'm definitely not done with acoustic treatments here. So there you have it. I got you to watch a workshop build video, hopefully without boring you to tears. Sneaky, huh? But on a more serious note, I hope that in this video, you found at least one idea for a practical 3D print that you can use to level up your own makerspace, whether that's a corner in your home office or your entire basement. And hey, let me know in the comments below, would you like to see more videos like this in the future? I have a lot of other ideas for practical solutions like designing my own window mounted ventilation system, converting some of these organization systems to have built in charging docks, 3D printing a coffee table, and much, much more. But I'm really not sure whether or not you guys are going to be interested in another video like this. Either way, I really appreciate your feedback and I read every one of your comments. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping keep the lights on. Thanks to all of you for watching, liking, and subscribing. I gotta go finish a whole bunch of these projects I just showed you that are half done, but I'll see all of you on the next layer.